Thank you very much. I'm sorry, but I have to leave at 1.15 because I have an important event in Geneva this evening, and uh, I hope I get there. Uh, okay, so I will be very brief, and I will concentrate on the research infrastructures on some key messages and some key issues. The presentation is based on input from CERN, obviously, but also from the European Intergovernmental Research Organization, the IRO Forum, which comprises CERN, EFTA, EMBL, ESA, ESO, ESIF, XFEL, and ILL. And, of course, everything is mixed with my private opinion. Okay, that's obvious, okay? Key messages. Well, yesterday, the important role of S3 and the European Commission was clear to establish the European Roadmap for Research Infrastructures. But that was yesterday. Today, I think the focus moves and has to move from roadmap to implementation, and I think key issue is prioritization. Why? Because I think it's vital to have world-class infrastructures in Europe, new ones and ones which complement certainly the existing RIs and also the national facilities. That means added value is important. And I think it's also obvious world-class infrastructures are major drivers of scientific excellence. And we heard this morning quite often the word excellence, and I think excellence is important and, uh, in all areas, applied and basic science. So what are the missions of research infrastructures? Well, obviously research. We want to push forward the frontiers of knowledge. But also innovation. We cannot push forward the frontiers of knowledge if we don't develop new cutting-edge technologies. So we are driving technologies also. But also we drive education. We train scientists and engineers of tomorrow. And we need scientists and engineers of tomorrow. We need to catch the young people. And we need to catch them in natural science. That means we have to do outreach. We have to promote science in society, science into society. This society is science-based, but it doesn't realize it. We have to do something there. And I think the research infrastructures can help there. Key message is two. Europe has in the past engaged in long-term planning and in investment in research infrastructures already. The IRO Forum members are best examples. CERN was founded in 1954. And I think we make a mistake if we don't use experience or expertise which are available within these uh, infrastructures when implementing new RIs. We don't have to invent the wheel all the time. So I think that's important to keep in mind. Another point which I strongly uh, favor because the uh, Aeroform RIs are based on international treaties or conventions, which implies a sort of top-down approach, but also gives you sustainability. It helps you to, 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 uh, to keep sustainable. So, but this top-down approach follows the pronounced need expressed by the scientific community. So again, it's vital for the next RIs to bring top-down and bottom-up approaches together. And another point which I want to emphasize very strongly, world-class excellent infrastructures need excellent staff. And you get only excellent staff if you give intellectual challenges for all staff in the RIs. Staff which is demotivated doesn't drive excellent uh, infrastructures. You need to challenge them also intellectually. I think it's a very important topic. Three, scientific excellence must drive the completion of the era. For this, also international scientific cooperation is vital. Be global. Keep in mind that we are in a global environment, so be global. Maybe even for membership. We are opening, for example, CERN. Uh, we have changed the E in CERN from European to everywhere. That was supposed to be a joke, but okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> be global also in membership, but keep the European component. Yeah? So keep the European component, but be open for global membership, for global participation. Very important. Equally important is the pan-European scientific cooperation. We need to establish close cooperation of our eyes with national facilities. That means we have to upgrade or even establish national facilities to allow the usage of the, of the uh, European RIs. That's important. I have, I think, five key issues now. Key issue one, it's not priority, prioritized, but one issue is certainly mobility and training. As I already said, excellent science and excellent RIs need excellent people. So we need mobility for all staff and users of the research infrastructures. Issues here are staff transfers between RIs. We have a lot of RIs, but not much staff transfer yet. 
dual career partnerships are important for that. I'm not offering you um, solutions. I'm only, only offering uh, problems. Well, education, well, you are here to solve it. Okay. Education cost, I mean, for, for, the, uh, for the children, for example, and in particular also social security, for example, pension benefits, the pension rights. This is really a stumbling stone huh, in Europe. If you want to, to have a good European uh, era, we need also to have other means uh, in Europe in order to allow that. Yeah? So keep that in mind. And there are three dots. That means there are many more topics. But we also need, for excellent uh, people, training for all staff, for the users, and also for the management. It's not so easy to manage such big uh, RIs. Better train the managers. Yeah? It is, <laughs> it's, okay. It's, uh, yeah, you will see it's not so easy. Outreach. Everybody agrees not only Europe needs more scientists, engineers, staff, etc. So I think for this we have to have targeted outreach activities and we have to encourage the interest in careers in science, not only the interest in science but also the interest in careers in science. In addition, society needs to realize and to appreciate science. And for this we have to bring the innovative science we are doing and our exciting results and their application to societal challenges to the notice of society. And I'm very happy that, meanwhile, certain results are not only discussed as results, but also the way how science is being done. This is the best education we do for journalists, yeah? that they realize, seeing in, in, in newspapers that they discuss probabilities and sigmas, and God, I mean, this is new. This is fantastic. And this we have to do, and that, that triggers the young people also, I think. We need more imaginative and ambitious outreach activities. Here I think we can do a lot, also from the, from the research infrastructures. And I think we can do something on novel teaching methods in primary and secondary schools. I mean, you have to make, you have to help the schools to make different curricula in science. It should not be, you, we shouldn't start science or physics in school with, with the 18th century uh, physics. We should start with today's questions. Give them to the, to the young people, and once they are interested, you tell them now. You have to learn physics, okay, but you have them first. Scientific instrumentation. Cutting-edge science relies on cutting-edge instrumentation. At RIs, but not only at RIs, of course, we develop new technologies and techniques. We are a significant market for Europe's high-tech industry, but they have to also take some risk because some of these high-tech developments will not lead to new projects, new products, but they help you to, to, to develop your instrumentation. High initial costs and long timescales are usually hindering uh, the, the, um, uh, the development of the scientific instrumentation, so we need to strengthen and to give instruments in order to have better relation between our eyes and the European industry in the field of scientific instrumentation. We have much more to promote, not only the technology transfer, by the way, but also the knowledge transfer. It's the young people who are transferring these things. It's not only the technology. Then access to results. C circulation of scientific knowledge needs to be improved in the era. There's a huge, a strongly increasing amount of data and information. I mean, we know that uh, our, our experiments have stored last year 22 petabyte, uh, which is quite some, some amount, which is more than 20 kilometers of, of CDs on top of each other without the cover. Data preservation is important. We should not throw away the old data. We have to be able to analyze the old data. And we have to have open access to scientific publications. Otherwise, the, uh, the countries who are not very well developed will lose uh, the contact to the, to the scientific publications. We have to have open access to that. And that needs coordination across member states, which is indispensable. I think the last key issue is the broader access to our eyes. Our eyes are centers of excellence. They need to be accessible for all researchers in Europe, the developed ones, the developing ones, etc., for everybody. So we need a broader access, of easier and faster access to our eyes at the European level for all the countries. That will facilitate capacity building and human potential building in all European countries, eh? not only in the development. So promote EU-wide integration of scientific communities. This will give increased scientific return and will be an added value for innovation in Europe. I think that's absolutely vital. Conclusion, it just took 10 minutes. 
In today's challenging period, the EU needs to step up the support for research and innovation in order to ensure in a more and more global competitive environment the sustainable, and the topic is sustainable, development and the leadership of European science and technology. And this is necessary for the upturn and growth of European economy. We will not avoid another crisis, but it might help us to moderate another crisis, and another crisis will come. And I heard this morning so much about the crisis. I think we should be a little bit more optimistic. If we are always pessimistic, the crisis is automatically there. So we should really look a little bit forward with some optimism and do something against it. And I think the RIS are an excellent tool for helping Europe in for the near future. Thank you very much. And Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Hoyer. I think you have given us a lot of input for a hopeful, lively discussion later on. Thank you very much, and bye-bye, and have a good flight back to Geneva. And now I, I ask, I step back to the, to the agenda and ask Roxana Dalia Ackley to give her, um, her view and insight in the outcome of the uh, consultation process.